This is Twit. All right. So, Mr. Howell, I know people our age, you know, in this age demographic, for the last 10 to 20 years, it's been a big push on what we can do to help save the planet as far as recycling and just making sure we're managing all of the different resources, limited resources that we have at our hand. And solar panels have been a big key in trying to, to help take care of our planet. But Unfortunately, it sounded like all of those solar panels that I see here in Northern California might cause a bigger problem later on down the road. Uh, today, we're joined by Ms. Maddie Stone from Wired.com, and they have a nice little piece to dis- to discussing those little bit of those those challenges that we're going to have when it comes to solar panels and them reaching the end of life. How you doing, Maddie? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate you joining us. This is um, something that I can't say I really thought about. I'm just thinking, okay, hey, we're saving the planet. We're doing the right thing. And heck, some of us are even saving money on energy bills by using (laughs) the solar panels. But I never really thought about the idea that when these things start to break down and, and, and just deteriorate, where do they go? The landfill isn't necessarily the place we want to see these, right? Right, exactly. And, um, I, you know, I should say to your point there that when you're buying a solar panel, you really are doing a good thing for the planet. Um, so this waste challenge is really important, but um, it's also important to keep in mind that solar panels and solar power are amazing. They're super important for fighting climate change and, um, and helping, helping us all bring down our carbon emissions, which we need to do. But um, as I often say, no technology, no matter how great it is, comes without a cost to the environment and solar panels are no exception to that. Um, So the cost of solar is much smaller than burning fossil fuels, but it's still something the industry needs to deal with. Um, And so this, this challenge of solar waste is really an emerging challenge for the industry. You know, we have millions and millions of panels being installed around the world now. And these panels don't last forever. They have a lifespan of um, a couple of decades, which is pretty good. But when they die, we need to deal with their disposal. And if we don't um, develop technologies for recycling them and and policies to bring those technologies to market, we are going to have a lot of solar panels winding up in landfills. and, And that's really not a good situation for the planet. Now, I've read your piece on Wired about uh, the recycling process, but can you explain to our viewers and listeners what exactly is or is the problem here? Because when I see a solar panel up on my neighbor's home, I just see a bunch of glass. That's just, you know, from a visual standpoint. But I'm sure there's more behind all of that glass that's, that could be broken down or can't be broken down. What is the problem with the recycling process? Is it just uh, we're losing uh, a lot of, uh, of money on the cost of recycle or is just w- what exactly is it? Yeah. So so the first thing to keep in mind here is that, you know, solar panels are essentially very big, very complicated electronic devices. Um, And when they die, as the first solar panels put out into the world are starting to do, they become electronic waste. Um, And because solar panels are really manufactured with durability in mind, you know, they sit out on rooftops for years or decades exposed to all sorts of weather and elements. Um, They're designed for durability. So when they die, they become electronic waste that is hard to disassemble, and that's really by design. And so they require these really kind of specialized methods and specialized recyclers that by and large don't really exist yet in order to take them apart and recover the materials. So I like to describe solar panels as a sort of electronic sandwich. Um, As you noted, when you look at a solar panel, you sort of see a pane of glass. Visually, um, they're composed of glass, and and that is a large component of their weight. Um, They also contain an aluminum frame around that glass. But sandwiched beneath the glass is really the most important and valuable part of the solar panel, these silicon wafers or silicon cells. So these are um, the part of the solar panel, you can think of it kind of like the meat in the sandwich, that's actually doing the work, that's absorbing sunlight, converting it to electricity, and allowing that electricity to then feed power into your home or into the electric grid. And so... When um, these solar panels end up at, say, a traditional e-waste recycler, all that that recycler is really able to do is take off that aluminum frame. There's a box on the back that contains some copper wiring that um, transmits the electricity away from the solar panel. So they can take out those copper wires, take off that aluminum frame, 
And then they have this panel that's mostly glass by weight and they can shred it. And so then you get three commodities from that. You get copper, you get aluminum and you get glass and those can all be sold. The problem is the process of taking them apart is quite expensive. These again are big kind of bulky, heavy items. And the commodities you're getting back really just don't sell for a lot of money, not enough money to cover the cost without some sort of subsidy scheme. And so, um, you know, solar recycling would be a lot more economically viable if recyclers had methods that would allow them to recover, for one, those high purity silicon wafers, um, because that silicon is highly in demand by the solar industry and also um, mm -hmm. Other electronics industries use high purity silicon. And then there's also some trace metals in there too, like silver and tin and lead that are worth recovering. Lead because it can cause environmental problems. If it leaches out into the soil and groundwater, it's toxic. Um, right. Silver is just a valuable metal and really important to the solar industry. There's a thin coating of it on those silicon wafers, acts as an electrode. And we need to be recovering that silver in order to build all of the solar panels that we're going to need to power our future. We just don't have enough in the ground. There's not enough to mine. So um, we really need to develop new and better processes for recovering some of these trace metals, both from an environmental perspective and because they can be sold for money on commodities markets to make the whole process more worthwhile to recyclers. That was really well um, detailed. Thank you for that. Um, mm. Now, when I think of solar panel technology 20, 30 years ago, I, I automatically jumped to, okay, well, all technology progresses at such a rate. We've got to be working on technology now that, you know, uh, yes, recycling old technology is important, but are we creating uh, solar technology now that maybe is easier to recycle down the line or whatever? And I think what, what jumps to mind is, you know, sometimes I drive around town and I'm looking at different solar panels and different people's roofs and stuff. And I've noticed that there's like a solar cell fabric that some people are using. Is that more or less recyclable? Are we working towards a solution of a, a solar panel that isn't so, let's say, wasteful on these, on these elements 20, 30 years down the line? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually something I posed to a number of sources when I was reporting this story is, is the solar industry thinking about this? Are they designing uh, new solar panels with disassembly and recycling in mind? And by and large, the answer I got was uh, not really. So the main priority for the solar industry at this point is really to just deploy, 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 get a lot of these panels out there. We know how to make them quickly and cheaply now. And um, because we don't have sort of the policy framework in place that mandates um, recycling in the United States, at least, we have they have something over in Europe and something that would be good for us to em emulate. It's called an extended producer responsibility scheme where uh, solar panel producers have to be responsible for recycling at the end of their lives. We don't have anything like that in the United States. And most of those panels we're buying, we're purchasing from Asia. Um, in countries that also don't necessarily um, have these sort of extended producer responsibility mandates. And so the industry really isn't thinking right now um, about designing for disassembly and um, not quite sure what the, the solar fabrics you're referring to are. You might be talking about thin film solar cells, which are becoming more popular. Um, but, you know, the, the thin films are still quite a small fraction of the market overall. I would say about 95 percent of the solar uh, panels that are out there on rooftops and in utility scale operations are these uh, solar photovoltaic panels. And so that's really where the bulk of recycling is going to be coming down the line for the next couple of decades. And unfortunately, um, there just aren't incentives in place in the industry right now to design for recycling, disassembly. Um, the incentives are really around creating a product that will last as long as possible um, that's as durable as possible. And um, to some extent, there's a little bit of a conflict there. Yeah, this this all sort of reminds me of the concerns that we have with just recycling cardboard boxes. Now, granted, it's not the same scale, but I've often heard that, you know, recycling these gazillion boxes that I get from Amazon every week are still a bit of a problem um, for the people uh, doing that recycling process. With that said, uh, who in leadership is, is going to step up and say, hey, we need to fix this process. Uh, we need to fix it to where it's not as cost, not so much on a cost prohibitive side. And is it something that could be addressed 10 years from now or will that be too late? 
Mm, that's a really great question. Um, who who needs to be taking responsibility for this? And I think um, the the point I'd like to make is that right now in the United States, because we don't have any federal um, or state laws, with the exception of of one law in Washington State around um, extended producer responsibility when it comes to solar panels, is the responsibility currently falls entirely on the consumer which really isn't fair um, because most folks who buy these panels, you know, they're doing something good for the environment, doing something good for their wallet and um, not necessarily being told or thinking about the fact that in 20 or 30 years, they're, you know, have this big piece of uh, solar waste that they're gonna have to find a way to dispose of. So I think um, it's really on both the solar industry and um, regulators in state and federal government to design uh, solutions that work. And to the solar industry's credit, um, it has started some voluntary recycling programs. So the Solar and uh, Solar Energy Industry Association is a trade group that represents the solar industry. And they've started a voluntary program around take back and recycling that um, some solar companies are participating in but it's estimated that only about 10% of panels are being recycled in the US today. So there's still a long way to go, a lot of room for growth. And what's needed now is regulators and um, policymakers to step in and um, say, look, you know, as an industry, this is not okay. We, um, it, it should not be okay for these panels to be winding up in landfills. We need state laws prohibiting that. And um, we need laws on the state and federal level um, mandating producer responsibility and take back. And until the industry really gets its footing and until we develop these more economical methods, we might need some sort of subsidy to make it worthwhile for solar panel producers mm. to take back and recycle these panels.